And the problem we have here is cosine theta over secant theta plus sine theta over cosecant theta. And we want to simplify this expression using our knowledge of trigonometric identities and, of course, algebra. Now, if you haven't yet studied uh, trigonometry, and I'm talking about a full trig course, now years ago it was kind of popular to have like a, a one dedicated semester course in trigonometry. That's not as common. Of course, some of you out there could be just taking a full trigonometry course, but what is more common is uh, for those of you to be in a class like pre-calculus, where like maybe a third of the course is full trigonometry. But uh, either way, when you are studying a complete dedicated trigonometry uh, curriculum, you are going to be covering trigonometric identities. Very, very important. So again, we want to simplify this expression as simple as we can get it. And this is going to actually simplify pretty nicely. Now, the great thing about this is that there's not just one approach you can take, but you do need to have um, some knowledge of trigonometric identities. Now, if you could do this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then I'm going to walk through this step by step. And we'll, uh, of course, we'll talk about some uh, very important trigonometric identities. There's a lot of trigonometric identities. I won't cover them all in this video, but this will be a nice practice problem uh, for those of you that are at this level of mathematics. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so what is a trigonometric identity, right? So here is, let me just kind of write it here, trigonometric identity, there's a ton of these that you learn in, um, of course, trigonometry. And effectively, they are formulas, okay? There's, you know, ones like sine theta squared plus cosine theta squared, that's equal to one. So if you come across this expression, you can just put a 1 to substitute for the, uh, all of this. Okay, If you see a 1, you could substitute sine squared plus cosine squared for a 1. Okay, So this is an identity. An identity is basically just an equivalency that you, know, you kind of think of them as a formula. But there are a lot of identities that you need to learn, and you need to be able to work with these identities. So before we get started in this particular problem, if you are indeed studying trigonometry and you are struggling with trigonometric identities, it's a very common kind of um, thing for students to not like and kind of struggle with a bit. Check out my pre-calculus course. I will teach you everything you need to know about all trig identities and how to solve you know, various problems. But let's go ahead and get into this practice problem right now. So here we go. Okay, so we have cosine theta over secant theta plus sine theta over cosecant theta. So what is this equal to? Well, there's a couple different ways we can um, approach this problem. But basically, what we have is one fraction plus another fraction. So if you're, you know, you're not quite sure what to do, you probably should say, you know what, maybe we should just add these fractions and kind of see where things take us. And that's not a bad way to start a trigonometric identity problem is to say, you know what, all right, I'm just going to start someplace, right? So and kind of see how things develop. Another good recommendation when it comes to working with trigonometric identities is to work with sine and cosine or keep everything within sine or cosine. So here in this particular problem, we have cosine theta and sine theta. But down here, we have secant theta and cosecant theta. So we're going to want to switch these secant and cos, uh, cosecant in terms of sine and cosine. So we need to kind of review some basic trigonometric identities right here. So sine x, right, sine of an angle is equal to 1 over cosecant. That's by definition. Cosine x is equal to 1 over secant x. And then the cosecant is 1 over the sine. And a secant is 1 over the cosine. So it's basically stating the same thing, but in a different way. OK, so again, what we want to do, and I'm speaking in general terms here, is to work uh, in sine and cosine. So here, our numerators is cosine and sine. So I'm going to keep this in our expression. And then down here, at some point, I want to replace these secant and cosecant uh, with sine and cosine. Right. So here, cosecant, I'll use 1 over sine. And secant, I'll use 1 over cosine. 
So uh, before we get going, though, now, well, actually, let me just kind of uh, stop here. What you could do, you could just right now change out uh, the secant and cosecant for their equivalent um, expressions, one over sine and one over cosine, and continue the problem that way, okay? Now, of course, you're gonna have a complex fraction. You're gonna have fractions within fractions, and that's perfectly fine. Now, that's not the way I did it, but you could easily, you know, have that approach. Again, you need to not um, feel kind of constrained in terms of your strategy uh, when you're dealing with trigonometric identities. You just need to know, understand uh, the algebra and make sure you're using the correct trigonometric identity for the situation at hand. But uh, what I'm going to do is first combine these fractions. Okay, so I have cosine theta plus uh, cosine theta over secant theta plus sine theta over cosecant theta. So I'm going to go ahead and add these fractions. Now, again, you need to know your algebra uh, and, of course, fractions, etc., in order to do trigonometry. So the easiest way to do this is to use the what I call the bow tie method of adding fractions. I'm going to take this uh, denominator. I'm going to multiply this way. Now, if you haven't seen this method, what you need to do after you watch this video is check out my um, videos on fractions uh, in my uh, on my YouTube channel. Okay, I go over this particular method over and over again. But even if you didn't use this particular method, you should know how to um, add these fractions. Now, if you don't know how to add these fractions, you need to immediately go back and review fractions because you're not going to be able to do trigonometry if you can't do fractions. Okay, so we have cosecant theta uh, times cosine theta. This would be up here. And then I got secant theta times sine theta. That gives me secant theta times sine theta. And then my denominator will be secant theta over cosecant theta right here. Okay, so that is the sum of those two fractions. Now, if you just kind of got the LCD and, and went that uh, route as well, that's perfectly fine. Just make sure you understand how to add these two fractions. Okay, so at this point, I have cosine here. I have sine here, and then I have a bunch of cosecants and secants. So uh, we're going to go ahead and replace all of these right here with um, expressions that um, are only um, have sine and cosine. So let's go ahead and do that. And... Uh, again, I'm targeting the cosecant, secant, secant, and cosecant because as a general kind of rule, I don't want to say rule, but as a um, it, just as a general technique when working with trigonometric identities, it's a, uh, very common to just, uh, you know, it's generally speaking, I'm kind of <laughs> stumbling over myself because I don't want to, what I, what I want to say here is not a hard and fast rule. Okay. It's not like you absolutely must do this. That's not the case. But in practice, typically it's easier to keep everything in sine and cosine, but you don't have to. Okay. So if you didn't do this, you're not wrong. Uh, as again, as long as you know what you're doing, that's what counts. Okay, so we have cosecant, secant, secant, and cosecant. And recall, this is what they are equivalent to in terms of sine and cosine. So we're going to change all these out, substitute in these expressions here. And of course, the algebra can get a little bit messy, but we will control it by being nice and neat. All right, so here we have cosine theta times 1 over sine. I guess 1 over sine is cos, uh, cosecant. So if you just want to kind of maybe pause the video and just kind of verify for yourself that I'm substituting incorrectly, that's fine. So we're going to have a cosecant here, cosecant here, which, of course, again, is 1 over sine. And then I have a secant here and a secant here, which is 1 over cosine. Okay, so you can see the substitutions right here. So this is what this whole thing is equivalent to. All right, now we have a big kind of complex fraction here, so you're just going to need to kind of take your time and isolate the numerator, clean that up, and then we have the denominator down here. So just take your time with the algebra. So here I have cosine theta times 1 over sine theta. Of course, uh, cosine theta is over 1. So when I multiply in, this will be the numerator, and then 1 over cosine times sine theta, of course, sine theta over 1. That'll be the numerator right there. And then we'll go ahead and multiply down here. So let's go ahead and just start cleaning this up. And uh, you can see here, this is what we're going to end up with, right? We're going to end up with cosine over sine. And then here, this would be sine over cosine in the numerator. Okay, so, you know, not difficult, but we do have to show all these steps. And it's easy 
uh, to kind of, you know, I don't want to say get lazy, but start take uh, start taking uh, shortcuts, which is going to cause problems and ultimately uh, easily can create an error in your final answer. So don't do that. Just write each step out and uh, you'll be good to go. All right, so here we got cosine theta over sine theta plus sine theta over cosine theta over one over cosine theta. Uh, and uh, we got sine theta right here. Now, did I um, uh, switch this? Okay, here you can see the secant and cosecant, yes. You can see all the substitution that I did right there. Okay, so now our problem is in terms of all uh, sine and cosine. Okay, so now it's just a big complex um, uh, fraction situation. So we're going to go ahead and add these two fractions here, and then we'll divide that by this right here. So let's go ahead and start cleaning this up right now. So we'll tackle this uh, numerator here. And actually, I did all this work in advance, but uh, we're going to use the same technique. You're going to have cosine times cosine. That's cosine uh, theta squared plus sine times sine. That's sine uh, uh, theta squared over sine uh, theta times cosine theta. So this is going to be our numerator. And you can see that right here. So we have cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta over sine theta times cosine theta. And that is our numerator. Okay, now our denominator is still this expression right here, one of a cosine times sine theta. And we'll go ahead and show that right here. Okay, so a lot of writing indeed, and this is pretty typical with trigonometric identity problems, but not too difficult. Okay, so at this point in the problem, you're going to need to know some basic identities, and this right here is an identity. If you uh, recall in the very beginning of this video, I said that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. Okay, so that's what we have right here. Uh, although this is cosine squared plus sine squared, it doesn't make a difference uh, in terms of the order. This is equal to one. So we can actually switch out a one for that right there. Okay, so you have to be look, uh, on the lookout for these uh, opportunities. And this is what we call Pythagorean um, identity. It's a super common identity. So the, there's some, well, there's a lot of identities, a lot of which you're not going to totally remember. But uh, these identities that we're working with right here are things that you definitely want to commit to your full memory. Okay, so here right, uh, we have cosine uh, squared theta plus sine squared theta. It's the same thing as this, so that's going to be equal to 1. So let's go ahead and put a 1 in for that right now. And uh, here is our expression at this point. So we're going to have 1 over sine uh, theta over cosine theta, all this divided by 1 over cosine theta times sine theta, a big complex fraction. So it's going to be this fraction divided by this fraction, right? So this divided by this. So let's go ahead and write that out this way. So we have 1 over sine the theta, or 1 over sine theta times cosine theta divided by 1 over cosine theta times sine theta. Of course, division turns into multiplication, and we uh, flip this fraction to the right. So we have 1 over sine theta uh, times cosine theta times cosine theta over sine theta. And so when we multiply across, we're going to end up with the following expression, cosine theta times sine theta over sine theta times cosine theta. And of course, everything cross, cancel, uh, cross cancels here, and we're left with a lovely 1. Okay, so in terms of difficulty, uh, this particular problem, I would say, uh, I would maybe give it like a 3 out of a 10 or maybe a 4 out of a 10 in terms of level of difficulty uh, with trigonometric identity prompts. So some of you might be saying, what are you talking about? This was like a crazy prompt. You know, you might be saying 3 out of 10, you know, this problem is hard. You know, well, listen, you know, we are talking about advanced mathematics. Again, trigonometric identity is the stuff that you're going to see in courses like pre-calculus, right? You're getting pretty close to calculus. So trig uh, trigonometry, pre-calculus, you know, advanced math. But, you know, if you're at this level of math, you can definitely learn this stuff, right? But it does take complete engagement, and really there's no shortcut. So if you need help with trigonometric identities, uh, check out my pre-calculus course. That's where you get, you'll get my best instruction and you know I cover a ton of different pro, uh, problems and all the different type of uh, uh, trigonometric identities you will need to know. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. 
Thank you for your time and have a great day.